gentlemen. Welcome to Benevola United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Suzanne Jones. It is a pleasure to welcome here this morning. I uh, wanted to first bring some announcements to you this morning before we enter into this time of worship. Uh, first and foremost, the uh, today is graduation Sunday, and we will be recognizing our graduates who are here this morning, and we will be praying over them and blessing them as they have worked so hard uh, to achieve what they have achieved. Also want to bring to your attention to your bulletin inside, you'll see the insert that'll have a calendar of all kinds of different events that are going on here at Benevola. Um, one of those events is the Senior Luncheon, which will be at the Supreme Buffet on Wednesday, this Wednesday at noon, if you'd like to attend that. We also have this week is our Baltimore Washington Annual Conference. Uh, your lay leader, uh, Becky Hine, will be uh, voting on behalf of some of the issues that will be coming up this year. As well as online, there is a uh, link that you can read from the Baltimore Washington Conference. If you go to their website, you can check out some of the things that we'll be discussing. I myself will be actually down and in Baltimore uh, for the conference. I have, I'm in charge of this stuff all the altar guild items. So I will be down there with our bishop uh, setting up things for worship and I won't be present up here, but I will be back for Sunday. Don't worry, I'll be here. <laughs> but uh, most of the v voting will be occurring virtually. So just wanna let you know that those things are going on this week. If there's other things that are going on, you can certainly contact the office or you know check out our Facebook page too. But let us enter into this time of worship together. We have a lot of things to do and a lot of things to celebrate and a lot of things to pray over as well. So let us center our hearts, our hearts that are full of all kinds of different things from this week. And let us stand as we are able and join together in our call to worship, which can be found in the bulletin or available here on the screens this morning. Please stand as you are able and let us follow along. We come to this place of prayer where we can bring our hopes and dreams, our fears and our doubts. We come to this place of grace where we can learn compassion and joy and discover how deeply we are loved we come together to be called the church, to be blessed by the variety of gifts, and to live as one for our God. Let us sing our opening hymn on page 102, Now Thank We All Our God. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. I guess they like the splash zone. I don't know. Well, it is a joy to celebrate our 2022 graduates this day. 
And uh, to do that, I'd like to invite Linda uh, Stump to come up and uh, do our presentations this morning. Linda? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our 2022, I almost said 19, does that date me or what? <laughs> Uh, our 2022 graduates. It's an exciting time for both the graduates and the families because for the last four or five or six or however many years it took you to get here, <clears throat> it's, it's difficult to do that on any good time, but we've had an exceptionally um, struggling time to have that happen. So I applaud you and welcome you this morning. The thing that I always remember with graduation is that graduates don't get there by themselves. They are helped by their teachers and their community and their friends and probably most of all their family. So would, could I have families of graduates stand up? <laughs> I know, I know. Um, we're going to honor our graduates in a moment, um, but, no, I think I'm going to skip that, never mind. Um, if you are a graduate, would you please come up? And what I'd like you to do is to uh, tell us a little bit about where you graduated from and where you're headed. So, all graduates. All graduates, you just got called out. Sorry. <laughs> and tell us your name. I'm Aubrey. I graduate. Um, on Tuesday from Greensboro High, and I'll be going to UNC Wilmington to study respiratory therapy. I'm Aiden, and I'm graduating from Boonesboro High School on Tuesday as well, and I'm going to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville to study chemical engineering. Um, I'm Aiden, and I graduated from Washington County Technical High School, and I will be going to Marshall to study exercise science. I'm Nick. Uh, I graduated from Vanderbilt uh, with a degree in economics. <laughs> um, I'm Ryan, and I graduated from Shenandoah with my doctorate in pharmacy, and I'm going to be working in Boonesboro. I'm Caleb, and I graduated from the University of Tennessee last Saturday with a bachelor's in music ed, um, and I'm going to do my master's at Frostburg this year. Awesome. Congratulations. I'm Pastor Suzanne. Um, I got my master's of divinity from Wesley Theological Seminary, and I'm going to be serving as your pastor for as long as I can. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you to all of you. It sounds like we're well represented um, in terms of professions and locations. And um, so I congratulate all of you. Your uh, Ben Wolf family has a small token of, of our appreciation and our honor of, of you in this momentous occasion. So. unable to be here, but she is also one of our graduates, Molly Jones.
stay right here. We are going to do a special, a special blessing and prayer over all of you. And friends, if you could reach out your hands if you are comfortable so that we can pray and bless over our college graduates. If you would, just reach out a hand and be in an attitude of prayer. Holy God, you have given us education. And Lord, you have given these students and myself a new beginning. And we thank you for the gifts of these graduates, the excitement, their awesome wonder and curiosity, all of the hard work that they have done, their open speech, their encouraging words, their contributions that have blessed and challenged us in ways that will continue to challenge us or even introduce us to ways. But Lord, we ask that you bless them to become rich and diverse in their community. As they step forward in this world, Lord, whatever awaits them, comfort them in their fears and bring them full of knowledge of your divine presence. Strengthen them, resolve them to walk in the footsteps of Jesus as modern day disciples in the world that needs your love, the world that needs your spirit. Guide their feet as they move through life, protect them from pitfalls and darkness while they help lead the future generations into a warmth of promise of your light. We ask this blessing upon each and every one of them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations, graduates. And the Fellowship and Ministries uh, Committee has organized just a short little reception in the hallway afterwards. And there was some confusion about Sunday school. We are, we are having Sunday school. I was planning on it, so um, we we have some people planning on it. So come join us for Sunday school. Excellent, excellent. Well, congratulations. congratulations again, graduates. You're expected to go to grad Sunday school now. Apparently, no, God, God bless you. You may have a seat. Let's give them another round of applause for all the hard work that they have done. They've grown up so much before your eyes, haven't they? It's amazing. And I think some of them had a growth spurt since the last time I saw them. I'm not sure, but uh, we are very, very proud of our graduates. Sorry, Mike, I'm getting ahead of things. <laughs> well, friends, I am echoing all kinds of things. Can we turn down the system a little bit? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mike's on that for me. Let us lift up our, our joys and our concerns. We are certainly aware of all of the concerns that are happening around our country, and we are going to uplift and pray for those of Uvalde, Texas, as well as those who are grieving this day, who are confused this day, who are also challenged by this day that comes. But what other things in this community can we lift up? Yes, Tom. It will be your 65th anniversary tomorrow. Congratulations and many blessings to come. Your wife is a, a, such a gentle soul, and so are you. You were born married. <laughs> amen, amen. Well, we certainly want to lift up uh, those celebrating Memorial Day celebrations and remembering those who have fought the good fight, unable to come home. Uh, we are grateful and thankful for them. Gail. Yes, uh, uh, joy for Amy and Mike's uh, 24th anniversary tomorrow. Amy and Mike's 24th anniversary tomorrow. Congratulations. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes, Ed. Alice has a birthday Wednesday. A lady never reveals her age. Happy birthday, Alice. Congratulations on your, um, your, your 21st birthday a couple times over. <laughs> Others that we can lift up, joys or concerns. Yes. 
Yes, we are certainly joyous that uh, Sherry is, is here today, Sherry Sharpless, as well as Bob and Sally. We're so grateful and glad that you are back and healing the best that you can. We have been in prayer for all of you. Uh, and as well as we'll, we'll be in prayer for Sue's Aunt Mary, uh, her, uh, her family. Uh, her Aunt Mary passed away, and we'll be uh, lifting those who are grieving up in prayer. Amy. Oh, goodness. That's hard to do for 12 years old. Uh, let's be in prayer for Harrison, who is 12 and having digestive issues. They can't put their thumb on it, what's going on, and it's, it's been struggling for it with about a year here. So let's be in prayer for Harrison. Uh, I'd also, oh, yes, please. Oh, watching from the sidelines, that's not, that's not Taylor's best, but we will pray for Taylor's healing um, as, all, as well as pray for Ron as he moves to uh, Summerford. I'm glad that they'll be coming closer to this so that way it's easier to see. Um, I know it's a sh- And the 19th anniversary on Tuesday for you and Laura. Congratulations and blessings for you as well. Boy, this is a weekend of full of anniversaries, isn't it? Yes. Absolutely. It's, it's good to hear that he is doing better, but we'll continue to pray for him um, in such a young age to have that kind of an operation done. I'm glad things were, went as, better, as well as they could for him and continue prayers for him as well. We had to put a cat down this week. And for any of you who know, fur babies are like animals. They're, you know, yeah, but they're also family, especially if you don't have children. So um, we're, we're, Jeff and I are doing fine, but it made me think about all of those uh, animals who don't have homes that are strays, but they're also, you know, either they, they cause a wreck around our place or, you know, just the, the bout of care. You know, we are the imprint of God, and a lot of our animals see us as their caretakers, no matter if we own them or not. And uh, the best way that we can care for creation and care for animals is through our actions. And I was reminded of that this week as I had to put down my little one. (laughs) But we also had a a really struggling week this week as a nation, as a country, but also as a people. We're human. We are flawed. And even though we honor those who have given and sacrificed their lives for us, we are grateful and thankful for that. But we are also mindful that we take advantage of that too. We take advantage of the freedoms that we have. But we can't help but to acknowledge the death that occurs. And it's hard to talk about that with young, with young people and with children, with families, with adults. But the one thing we can do is we can come together and we can pray. We've lifted up a lot of concerns in in, in many, many celebrations today. But I I know that's in the foreground of our thoughts of what's happening around the world, and, and especially down in Texas, because it's in our face all the time. We should practice healthy boundaries, know when to turn news off, but also know when to come to the throne of God. And that is what we're going to do this morning. So if you would, 
let us pray together and talk to God. Would you bow your heads? Holy God, we draw near to you this day. You are a God that walks with us on this journey called life. We come to your throne with celebration in recognizing our graduates and celebrations of, of recognizing anniversaries and birthdays, Lord, for all of the good things that have occurred this week for us. But, Lord, we also come as a broken-hearted people on many different scales. Our pain is not like another person's pain. Our worries and concerns are definitely different. But you are the same God. No matter what we go through in this life, Lord, you are by our side. When we entered into this life, you were there. As we travel along this road, you are there. And when we come to the end of this life, you will also be there. And so with the many circumstances that occur, we know that we are not alone. You have been with us. Lord, this country of ours is grateful for your presence. We are grateful for those who have sacrificed their lives for our freedom. And we give you thanks and praise for those who have served and are serving. And Lord, when we hear and see the realities of this life, the realities of this day to day, help us to know that you are with us. We thank you for your assurance. We thank you for your healing. And we thank you for being a loving and forgiving God. We know that none of us are perfect. We have all sinned and fall short of your glory. And we ask you to fill our hearts with your love. Fill us with your grace and with your mercy. You see our needs. And we ask you to step in. You see the hurt. You feel the hurt of our hearts. You feel the weight and hurt of our society and of our nation and of our world. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. We seek you and need you. Empower us through your Holy Spirit to do the things that we can do and to know the difference of the things that we can't do and to know through it all that we can always lean on you. May your Spirit be among the grieving the hurting and the afflicted. Pour your peace upon them and wrap them in comfort of your care. May those who have the power to make change find the courage to act and may we live into the prayer when we say your kingdom come, your will of love be done on earth as it is in heaven. And with that, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ, who sacrificed and taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll invite Mike to come up for our scripture reading this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading chapter 16 from Acts, verses 16 through 34. Paul and Silas in prison. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. 
She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been set severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in the, this house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his, into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Earth shaking God, we give you thanks for the gift of the word this morning. Help us to take this word and write it upon our hearts. This we pray in the name of our risen Christ Jesus. Amen. So, there's a lot going on in this scripture in Acts. Paul, Silas gets thrown in jail for helping somebody. And there's an earthquake, and then there's a baptism, there's a coming to Christ. There's all kinds of things that are happening. Lots of disturbances happening in this scripture. And as I was studying the scripture this week, I couldn't help but be disturbed by the title that our worship series kind of focused around. It's amazing. You start the week one way, and then something happens, and you go completely an opposite way. That's, of course, the Holy Spirit just moving around. We got to be nimble. We got to lean into whatever God is sharing with us. And truly, it was a disturbing week. Lots of disturbances. I don't mean to keep harking on it, but we got to, right? We got to talk about it. Because if you don't talk about it, it won't heal. There's grief, there's questions. There's things weighing on our hearts. And maybe it's not just what's going on in the nation. Maybe it's something going on at home, a situation that's going on at home, or maybe a, a relationship, or maybe someone close to you that you know. Either way, I think we need to remember that God is there with us no matter what. It may not feel like it. It may feel like God is a little distance. But guess what? That's not what our Bible teaches us. Our Bible says God is there. There are not two separate gods. You don't have an evil God and a good God. No, you've got one God, a God that is of love and a God that is always present and never leaves our side. 
a God that may seem silent only because we are the ones making the noise. We are in seasons right now that we are carrying a lot of things. And I think my graduate students would understand this the most. We have gone through a lot of things to get to where we are to this day. Not many of you have experienced graduating through a virtual time or going through COVID, right? Not many of you have seen your friends get sick, or maybe you have. But I feel that this is a season which we carry big things and we carry small things. And either which way, they disturb us. And our scripture reminds us today of how God is holding us and will break things free, especially during the disturbing times. God is big enough for all of us, and God is big enough for all of the layers that we come across in our life. This dumpster fire, if you will, of the last two years. Heck, let's throw in 19. Why not? Three years. So let me put this on the passage, show you where I was going with this, and maybe you'll hear something from God today. <laughs> As I sat with this passage, I noticed that there were many layers. There's many situations going on, just like with our, our lives, right? There's many things that are pouring in. And I noticed that there were layers of imprisonment and freedom in these scriptures. If you look close enough, if you do a Bible study on them, First, you have the slave girl, a slave girl who is uh, a fortune teller at her day. That was her gift. And she was used as a pawn of her masters. Her masters made money off of her because she could tell the fortune. And, you know, to get a fortune, you've got to pay for that. Well, something makes her call out to Paul and Silas day after day, and she's shouting for anyone who's going to listen. And she wants them to hear their message of salvation. Now, we don't hear anything else about this girl or woman after Paul releases her from the Spirit. We only know that Paul's action is removing the Spirit that calls her to be able to have a gift of fortune telling. It removes it from her. And once it removes it from her, that action made her bosses, it made her masters very angry because she wasn't making the money anymore. So what do they do? They go after the culprits, Paul and Silas. That's why they're thrown in jail, for healing somebody. Now, Paul didn't seem to be motivated by healing the girl completely. He just wanted her to be quiet, as our scripture said. But Paul's actions, though they freed her from this fortune-telling spirit that consumed her life, it didn't technically free her from her slavery. She was still under the thumb of her master. Instead, Paul's removal of the spirit made her worthless to her owners. And we're not told what is of her. But we can only assume that if she's worthless, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to throw her to the side. Forget about her. Leave her for dead. Maybe even kill her. But we're not told that. So I wonder if she was really free. This week I've heard the people use the phrase, freedom isn't free. Have you heard that this week? Or maybe you've heard it said before, freedom isn't free. I can agree with that. But we all talk about this when we're weighing the cost of freedom. Freedom comes with the price. As a daughter of a Marine who is a Vietnam veteran and a granddaughter of a, of a grandfather, an Army vet who served as a prisoner of war in World War II, I know that freedom has consequences. Sometimes we're freeing others, and we think that action is best, but we're not thinking about the full consequences when it comes to our freedom. Because we have freedom, 
there is a balance that needs to be in place. When it comes to working to fight against injustice and against oppression and against wrongdoing, how can we make sure that it's truly setting people free and not setting them up for failure? Another layer that I found in the scripture this morning was about the imprisonment, of course, of Paul and Silas. They're the main characters here, right? They're in jail. And in fact, they're bound in prison. And remember my friends who went on their journey to Turkey and Greece? Well, this is one of the prison cells that they came across. They don't know if it's Paul or Silas's prison cell. But this is what they look like, basically a hole in the wall. The poles there, that's a temporary thing. <laughs> that's to keep the, the roof up. And if there was an earthquake, you know, the cave was probably falling in. But imagine being chained up in here. And they were beaten because they were offering a message of freedom. Paul and Silas put their trust in God. And that gave them a deep commitment. And they seem that they're free in prison. It's like a contradiction. They're here praying and worshiping while they're in prison. Who does that? And I don't mean to say that they don't care if they live or die, but it seems that they are not anxious. And I feel that is the power of the Christian message whenever it is truly rooted in your heart. But Paul and Silas, they know God is with them. And Paul, he knows God is with him wherever he goes, no matter if he's in prison or if he's just walking around. And he shares this with multiple letters that he leaves and that we have in the Bible. There is no external forces that seem to shake Paul and Silas's faith, not even an earthquake. They might have like looked around and maybe were in panic at first, but it didn't shake their faith to the core. They didn't lose it. They sang and they continued to praise, even when the doors were unlocked from the earthquake. Their chains were loosened. But they don't escape. Why don't they escape? Well, maybe they knew that that escape would cause maybe more problems. Not even thinking about it. Freedom comes with a cost. It could have cost them their lives later down the road if they escaped. They know what the Romans meant whenever they meant prison. In the book, Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown, she, she quotes Dr. Maya Angelou from a 1973 TV interview. And in this book, she quotes Maya Angelou constantly. And it's, she says, you are only free when you realize that you belong to no place. You belong every place, no place at all. The price is high. And the reward is great, she says. And I feel that that really does speak into Paul and Silas's situation. They belong to Christ. They don't belong to the laws of the Roman land. They don't belong to this world. They belong to God. The cost of their freedom in Christ following that way is going to cost them everything. Because they don't follow the rules of the land. They follow a higher law. And Paul pays with his life because of this. Because he accepted God's unwavering, unconditional love. He follows a grace that causes disturbance. People don't like that. That's why there was always conflict with churches and governments. Because one wants to be over the other. We ultimately know who is over all of it. And that is God. The last layer that we have in there is the jailer. The last character, the layer that I found here. And he's the one that seems to have the most freedom, right? I mean, he's the jailer. He can come as go as he please. He bosses people around. He keeps people imprisoned. So he has power. However, towards the end of the story, he doesn't have much power at all, apparently. I don't know if you caught this or not. But 
He exists in a system that makes taking his own life the best option and the only solution whenever a situation occurs. Any person feeling that taking their own life is the only solution, oh, friends, they are not free. That is a struggle and a trap. That is where the enemy comes in. And when circumstances happen beyond our control, we feel like we can control it by doing something about it. It's hard to put your faith in a God that you cannot physically see. But know that God is there. God wants you to experience the freedom that is in his power. And that freedom may have you bound up. Because what does this world teach us? The world teaches us that the power is with people who have power, who have status, who have control, who have wealth, and who have position. And if you don't have any of those things, you can't cause a disturbance, right? You can't make a wave. I say you can. If you have God, if you know and understand what God has truly done for you through the act of the cross in salvation, certainly you can experience the freedom of that. It's a radical message. And how easily we can become chained by external circumstances, thinking that is the only hope, when there's so much more, so much more. There are promises that God gives us to give us value, who gives us freedom, true freedom, and leaves us, leaves us feeling relieved. That's the whole purpose of the cross. When we talk about freedom, we must ask some questions. First off, what are you free from and what are you free for? So free from what and free for what? What are you using that freedom for? Christ offers us life and sets us free. But what are we being set free from? What is binding you up? What are you unable to share aloud that you can share with God? There are some things that we keep from God. But friend, please know, God knows. It is hard for us to admit things. It's hard for us to recognize pain or hurt or infidelity inside of our hearts. But God invites us to be set free from that sin. God invites us to release our shame, our feelings of pitifulness, our destruction that we cause among each other. Offers us right there at the cross. We could leave it at the cross. But what do we tend to do? Oh, gosh, I'm, I, I don't need to leave this at the cross, Lord. I'm just going to pick it up and take it back home with me. That's not freedom. That is not freedom. We need to leave it at the cross because that is where we are free. There is nothing that separates us from the power of God's freedom. How does your faith Make it so that external change, external situations prevent you from singing hymns. Maybe it's hard for you to come to church because maybe it stirs up a little bit too much. Or maybe it doesn't stir up enough. And what happens whenever we don't get stirred up enough? Mind tends to wander, doesn't it? It's hard to stay focused. When God is calling you to focus. God wants us to use our freedom wisely and to not only love ourselves, but love others as well. So how can Jesus set you free? How can Jesus set you free? And what? What will Jesus set you free for? Once you experience freedom, once you experience release from whatever is holding you back, whatever tension or whatever thing that is uh, causing that angst and that disturbance. What's he setting you free for? What are you going to do with it? 
Our United Methodist Communion Liturgy actually has a prayer of confession. We don't confess much here in the United Methodist Church, but we're supposed to. We're supposed to do it before we have communion. And there's liturgy in our communion uh, pages. If you, if you turn in your hymnals on page 12, we have this prayer. And I want to invite us to say this prayer together today as I close my message here. I'll have the, the words on the screen for you if you can't see very well. But let us say this prayer of confession together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for our joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Free us for joyful obedience. That is what we are supposed to do with our freedom. Joyful obedience. Paul and Silas were free to serve God with their whole hearts and their whole lives. Yes, they paid for it in the end, but it was totally worth it if you ask them. <laughs> we are too to freely serve God and use our freedom joyfully to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We cannot fix everything. Amen? We're not God. We're not perfect. We cannot fix everything. But we are free to do God's will, follow God's way, embrace God's love, and love our neighbors, and listen for compassion, not for annoyance, and not because they are becoming a problem for me. No, we listen to the cries and we pour into others what we need to have pour into them. And that is love. Sure, they might not do things the way we want them to. But dang it, we can love them anyways. Amen? We can cause a disturbance by pouring into others, knowing the price is high. Knowing that the reward will be great. In Christ, we have been set free. And I pray that throughout this season, we can find where God is leading each and every one of us. That we continue to find freedom in loving God and loving neighbor. That is what we are called to do. So gosh darn it, let's do it. Amen? We have been given freedom to do so. And I will pour into you if you pour into me. We got a deal? Amen. Amen. I think we can hold each other accountable. We've been doing it so far. Let's continue to do it. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us pour our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. Whatever God has given us this week it has been a blessing. And we can return that back to the Christ, to the throne. We will pass the plates around and also enjoy a gift of music from our men's choir.
holy God, may our gifts reach those who hunger, who hurt, who seek new hope. With these gifts, we offer our whole lives to you. Renew us as we follow Christ, seeking peace for all creation. In the name of the one who conquered death, amen. amen. Let us close this morning with our closing hymn in the Black Faith We Sing books, singing, They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love, found on page 2223. this week and cause a disturbance by loving somebody. I dare you. I double, I triple dog dare you. I'm going to skip the double and go to triple dog dare you. Why? Because that is what we are called to do. They will know we are Christians by our love. Let us go and love one another no matter how hard it is. We can cause a disturbance in this land and cause freedom when we love one another. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go and love one another in peace. Amen.